Hey everybody, welcome back to science. We're gonna be working on lesson 3.2 today, our second to last unit in our evolutionary history chapter. So that is really, really exciting as we start today. We're gonna to be starting today in our warm up by taking a look at a evolutionary tree that is similar to the model that you saw in our last lesson in 3.1. So there's gonna be two spots here, and really what you're gonna to wanna to be thinking about is going back to that last lesson. What we really focused on was that species that have shared structures and species that have more shared stru structures are gonna be more closely related. So as you start to answer these questions, start to key in on the structures um, and also those structural differences that might help you kind of distinguish between what you want to uh, discover and where you want to place species C. So the questions to start off our warm-up today, if you have not already, are going to need to be things that are written down. So you're going to want to grab a piece of paper and a pencil. Um, also just a friendly reminder, and for those of you that are out there grabbing your pencil and paper right now, that if you are getting behind in a video, it is always okay to pause. It's always okay to rewind. In fact, I have to do that all the time when I'm watching videos that are teaching me things. Um, so that's a good strategy. So feel free if you haven't gotten that piece of paper and pencil, and if you're not ready, pause the video, go grab that, and then you can start to continue with these questions, which ask, where should species C be placed on the tree? So you've got two options here. You've got place one and place two. As you are doing this, first question is pretty simple. You could say uh, the, the place one, or you could say place two, either one of those are okay. But what I want you to push yourself around is making sure that you're explaining the why behind that. Why did you make that decision? And one of our key concepts from this unit is that those structures, the similar structures, and also noticing differences can be helpful. But really those similar structures are going to help us to understand which it is most closely related to. You put it in space one, you're gonna be saying it's most closely related to uh, species B. If you put it in space two, you're gonna be saying it's most closely related to species A. So think about what structure that helped you to make that decision and then explain, really making sure that you're talking about what helped you to place that species in part C. All right, now that you've gotten a chance to do the warm up, if you didn't, again, friendly reminder, pause the video, go back, take your time, make sure you're doing your very best work. Um, we're gonna be watching a video here that is going to be kind of doing a little bit of a review of how paleontologists work before we jump into our lesson today where we're really going to be breaking down an evolutionary tree and predicting and working backwards to figure out in a simulation which species are most commonly related from some uh, extinct, really old, really cool uh, organisms that are primarily kind of related to whales. So you'll see that in a little bit. But for now, let's go ahead. I will get this video queued up and follow along. This is gonna help us understand a little bit about the similar thinking that we're gonna be doing today. When paleontologists uncover fossilized bones in the ground, they can be all mixed up and broken. They have to put the bones back together and then try to reconstruct the skeleton. But it's hard to tell just by looking at the assembled fossils what it's most closely related to. For example, it could have belonged to a group of land-living animals or animals that lived in the water. Paleontologists have to study the fossilized body structures to see where it belongs on the evolutionary tree. Body structures have been passed down since the first living thing. So no matter where any two species are on the evolutionary tree, they will always share common structures. For example, Salmon and giraffes are very different, but they both have backbones because they inherited this structure from a shared ancestor. Over time, populations separate and branch off into new groups of species. Species that branch off from a more recent common ancestor can share structures that no other species have. These are called diagnostic structures. When paleontologists find a diagnostic structure on a fossil, they can make inferences about what other group of species it shares ancestry with. This helps them figure out where the fossil belongs on the evolutionary tree. 
But diagnostic structures are not always obvious. They may just be little changes to existing structures. They could be as simple as a small ridge on the edge of a bone. Now, let's try to identify this unknown fossil using diagnostic structures. It is clearly an animal, but looking more closely, we can see that it has a backbone. That's a diagnostic structure for the vertebrae group. It has two holes in the skull behind each eye. That's a structure shared by all reptiles and no other species, so we know it's in the reptile group. Careful analysis shows this species has several skull bones that have joined together. The skull also has a small bone forming a ridge. These are all diagnostic structures for a group of reptiles called thalatosaurs. Now we can see how using diagnostic structures helps paleontologists figure out where species belong on the evolutionary tree. And this helps us understand the amazing diversity of life over time. Okay, so as we saw in that video, not only do we want to look for shared structures and differences in structures, but we really want to key in um, on some of those special diagnostic structures. So today we're going to be operating in our simulation um, in the cetaceans part of our simulation. So if you are working at home and you want to be having that up as we work through that, uh, that's going to be great. I have taken some of the slides from the simulation, um, excuse me, I've taken some of the images from the simulation and put them into my slides so that we can work through those a little bit more easily together, especially if you don't have access to that simulation at home. So let's go ahead and start to talk about what our goal is going to be today. We've got a entire evolutionary tree here, one branch. Um, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making sure that we can think backwards from a blue whale and an orca, which are two different types of whales. One is a baleen, baleen whale that kind of filters out its food. One is a toothed whale that actually kind of eats and chomps on its food, um, like an orca or what you might know as a killer whale. So as we work back today, we're going to kind of have uh, two options. And what we're going to be thinking about is what are diagnostic structures starting here at point one that are similar diagnostic structures with the blue whale and the orca that are going to help us to know that they are uh, more closely related. So let's take a second to make sure you've got your piece of paper ready. What I would suggest is on your piece of paper that you make uh, some notes and write out like number one, two, three, four, five. And then as we go through, you can write what species next to each of those numbers we end up deciding correctly fits into this spot. Um, and you may also want to jot down some of the evidence that you saw as we went through. So let's take a look and I think it will start to be a little bit more clear as we start to work through this together. So we've got two species that we're going to be looking at. So the Dorudon and the Cuchicetus which is a tricky one to say. You gotta make sure that you're ready to say these tricky species. Um, so don't worry, even I have trouble saying them sometimes. And we're gonna be looking at them and seeing if we can figure out what of these two species have more similarities with our blue whale and our orca. You're gonna notice that there is a hint down here for a lot of these, and that's gonna be helpful. But think about if you were a paleontologist in the real world, you would not have somebody giving you hints. So maybe even try today to not kind of look at the bottom of that screen, and then hopefully you'll be able to push yourself in your thinking. So let's take a look at these two species here. Here we've got the Cuchicetus and the Dorodon that you have. I've made sure to put that lovely pronunciation on there. So if you want to kind of practice saying those, um, that really helps me to make sure I'm saying it right. Uh, because some of the times these names can be complicated and it's okay to not be perfect. But what we're trying to figure out is which belongs in location one. And what we do know is that the ones that belong in location one are going to be most closely related to the orcas and the blue whales. That's one of our key concepts. That key concept that the closer they are in the evolutionary tree, the closer related they are, the more structures they're going to be sharing. So if you think to yourself, you might want to pause the video here and start to examine some of those structures 
so that you can see which of these two species are most similar to orcas and blue whales. So go ahead and pause here and think about that for yourself. And then when we come back, we'll kind of discuss which is the correct answer and why. All right, so if I'm looking at these, right, hopefully you pause the video to give yourself a little bit of a chance to think about it. But one thing I know about whales um, that I'm really gonna focus in on that the Cuchicetus really starts to make me notice is that whales don't have kind of these arm-like limbs. They might have flippers or fins that are coming off of their body. And I also know that whales, as far as I know, I would have to study here, they don't really have fingers that they can use to grab onto things or to push off of the ground and help them to balance. So if we are looking at the orca and the blue whale, we're gonna notice that, yep, okay, even the blue whale has its digits, its distal bones, inside of its body, uh, kind of inside of that flipper. Same with the orca, they're a little bit more spread out. But when we start to look at the Cuchicetus and Dorodon, what we're gonna notice is that this guy has um, them really spread out. So I'm starting to lean towards the Dorodon. Another thing that I might think about, and maybe you peek down at the hints, is that if you notice one really big thing that you might not even notice because it's so simple is that the Cuchicetus has hind limbs. The orcas and the blue whales do not. So I'm starting to think that this uh, Dorodon is something that is probably going to be more closely related. Lastly, if we think about the skulls, you might also see some similarities there. You may not, and this similarity, I'll be honest, is a little bit tricky to see, but really it has to do with the location of their nostrils. So their nostrils are right on top of their skulls, whereas the Cuchicetus has its nostril at the end. So if you pause the video and kind of thought through that already for yourself, hopefully you're thinking that the Dorodon is going to be our winner. So we got a big star next to him to say that he's going to be our organism that goes into uh, part, excuse me, place one here in our evolutionary tree. Next one, we're going to keep working backwards, okay? This was our next branch right here. Uh, we're going to be looking at a Pachycetus and a Cuchicetus. So if we take a look at those two, we've got them right up here. Now what I've started to do is instead of having just our uh, blue whale and our orca, because the Dorodon is a recent relative and really closely related to this spot too, we might want to kind of emphasize some of our observations around that Dorodon and compare it to what is closer between these two species to the Dorodon than to the blue whale. So I've got the blue whale and our Dorodon over here to take a look at. Um, so again, you can push yourself right now, pause the video, think about which of these two species you think is going to go into location number two and start to, just like we did in that last step when we're determining location one, look at everything. Think about all the structures so that you can make sure that you have the best possible guess moving forward. Remember there's a hint, but if you wanna push yourself to even be closer to the thinking a paleontologist would have to do, in the real, real world, they do not get hints. They just dig up those fossils and they've got to figure it out. So pause the video, think to yourself, and then we'll go through some of that thinking together. All right, do you have a guess? I hope so. I'm going to tell you what I think is probably most closely um, going to fit or more likely going to fit into that box too. And I'm going to do it by thinking about which has more of a similarity to this Dorodon and I can kind of think about it almost like a spectrum because my Dorodon is gonna eventually evolve into a blue whale. So one thing that I noticed is that the limb sizes, this guy is a lot bigger. Um, he has got much longer ulnas and radial bones that are connecting its legs. It's also got a much bigger uh, kind of a foot with those distal bones, whereas my Cuchicetus, Although it does start to have an arm, which is different um, than our blue whale, it does not have, um, it, it does have a similar kind of arm right here. I've noticed that these two front limbs look really similar, 
One just looks like it's tucked in its body a little bit more. So the size of that limb is gonna lead me to believe for that spot two that it's probably going to be our tetracetus, which is a correct answer. So we've got two uh, of those organisms placed. The next spot we're gonna look at is uh, spot number three. So be ready to take a look at those and make a prediction. Remembering that we want to be uh, looking for now our next options. These are our two options that we're gonna look at next. Which one of those is going to be most closely to the Cuchocetus? You're gonna notice that these are really gonna start to look pretty different from our blue whales that we started with. So for this next one, what I did was, because we know that it is going to be most closely related to the Cuchocetus, remembering that it's closer on that evolutionary tree, if we were to trace our finger through there, it would be easier to get to the Cuchocetus than it would be to the blue whale. We'd have to travel way further on that evolutionary tree. I put the Cuchocetus up here, and I also put up what scientists think they look like. So this is a prediction of what scientists started to think that that species looked like. So you can kind of get an idea of how these limbs, right, are still looking pretty whale-like. They're still pretty attached to the body. So start to think about for yourself, pausing the video, limb size is gonna be another helpful hint in this next one, thinking about which of these two species our Cuchocetus is most likely related to. So. Pause the video now, think about to yourself, what are some similar structures that you see? And are there any determining structures that are gonna really dial it in for you to show you that one of these is more related than the other? All right, hopefully you had some time to think that over and I'm gonna again share my thinking with you. We've got the endohyus and the amblycetus here. Those are our two options. And what I'm again noticing is that those limbs are gonna be really, really important when I'm looking at these. One thing that I think is really cool is to start to notice how similar these, uh, their pelvic bones or kind of their hip bones are. So that even though they have some of these things that are really similar, you can see how this might start to get really confusing for paleontologists when they're not totally sure what to look at. But if I do again kind of focus in on the size of the limbs here, we're gonna notice that this endohyus has huge limbs. Um, we can't really see what he looks like like we can see with our Cuchocetus, but I would imagine that this guy is out walking around on all four legs, whereas this Amblocetus looks like an animal that might be able to kind of waddle around, but it does have some pretty short front limbs still. So I would go ahead and guess that that Amblocetus is the most closely related and what you're gonna find if you're in the simulation and you're putting those, dragging those boxes into place is that those are, that is correct. That's where the amblycetus is gonna go. Finally, for location number four, we're almost there. We've almost identified all four of our locations here. Um, we're going to be taking a look here and comparing either our pachycetus and our endohyus to see which of those two are going to be most similarly related more closely related along that evolutionary tree. You can see that now those limbs, kind of got some flippers on there, are starting to uh, come off of our amblocetus. So pause the video, think to yourself, identify some of the similar structures that you see to help you decide which one is gonna go into that place number four, the one that's most closely related to the amblocetus. All right, if you, noticed and went with the pachycetus, you are going to be correct. Um, what you're gonna notice is that looking at some of those hind limbs might be helpful, um, but then also looking at those front limbs, again, again, I think are helpful as well, because this is not quite as long as the endohyus, which you can um, at this point probably tell that the endohyus would be our organism that goes into part Five. So to wrap up this simulation, which I know we kind of did through the slides and didn't go into that sim modeling tool, I think it's a little bit clear, hopefully, to see how that worked through those slides. I want you to wrap up by answering this question. Which species is the Dorodon most closely related to, the blue whale or the Amblycetus? Which diagnostic structures could you use to show this? 
So if you're going back and deciding which of these it's most closely related to, you might want to even scroll back in the video to take a look at some of those different uh, structures that might help you to figure out Ardorodon here. Is it more closely related to the blue whale or is it more closely related to the Amblycetus? If you need some help, I have put all three structures onto this slide so that you can start to look for those diagnostic structures. Of course, you have some evidence in the evolutionary tree based on how far apart they are, but those diagnostic structures are going to be the actual evidence that paleontologists use. So practicing identifying those are gonna be what helps us when we go further in the future to use the same type of practice to identify where exactly our mystery fossil is gonna go. Take a second if you haven't already, pause the video, or if you did and you weren't ready for um, seeing these three different species and their structures, maybe go back, refine your answer, and be ready to move on to start to wrap up this lesson. All right, so believe it or not, this is the last thing you're gonna be working on for this unit. Uh, excuse me, for this lesson, we've got one more lesson in this unit, we're not quite done yet. So this is gonna be that word relationships activity that you, we've tried before. These are all the words that I'm gonna push you to try and think about using. And these are our rules that you're gonna to wanna to be following to answer this question. So let's take a look at the question and start to think about how could you push your thinking to demonstrate your understanding of the vocabulary and making sure that you have a really complete answer that would explain to someone else one, when you compare different species, how can you tell which species are more closely related than others? Your job is to answer this question. You gotta use at least two words from the bank in the answer. You can answer using more than one sentence. And I wanna push you to try and answer uh, this question twice. Maybe you're not able to get all the vocabulary in one answer, um, or maybe you only get a couple of the vocab words in one answer, and then you can go back and try and write another one and push yourself to think about a little more. So in a second here, when you pause the video, you may want to go back and forth to look at those rules. I've also put on here for you some of those definitions. So if you're getting stuck, this should help you to answer that question. But to finish up today, I'm gonna to leave you with the word bank and this final activity where you are telling me when we compare different species, how can you tell which species are more closely related to each other? Don't be afraid to scroll back and help yourself by looking at those definitions. Make sure you're finishing this lesson strong. I'm gonna sign off. Feel free to rewind and follow these rules to make sure that you have the very best answer you can. And I'll see you in the next lesson.